right. All right. So um, it's better to just put it here. Yeah. So my name is Alan Chinene, and uh, I originally come from Uganda, uh, but um, I moved to Sweden about six years ago to to, to study. And stayed here. And uh, yes. So what we're going to do here is, of course, everyone knows this uh, the, the book club where we're going to talk about um, uh, uh, the book, R for Data Science. But first, before we go into anything, um, I think it's wise for us to just give a brief introduction for, 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 for everyone, at least like one minute round table. Um, I, I can start. Um, yes, Uganda, staying in Sweden, moved here to do my master's. I'm a statistician by profession, and, and I am now doing my PhD um, in operations research, specifically air transportation. Yeah? OK, let me start. Hi, uh, my name is Cameron. Can you hear me? Yes, some yeah. interference in your background. OK, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, my name is Cameron, and I live in London. Uh, I'm a PhD student at UCL, and uh, PhD, doing PhD in health informatics. Uh, using R and Python, but mainly R. So, I mean, I've been using R for like a year now, but yeah. still learning new things about it. So, I uh, joined this. Uh, I mean, I found this quite useful to join the book club. Uh, never been part of such any kind of group like this so it's my first experience to to join a book club nice thank you okay uh, yeah you can just pick up okay um this is shamsuddin i'm from nigeria uh my background is uh, it i'm currently doing phd also in computer science All right, uh, I'll go next. Hi, everyone. My name is Neha. Um, I'm from India, uh, but I grew up in the United Arab Emirates. I went back to India to do a bachelor in psychology. And um, after that, I came to the Netherlands, uh, which was in 2014, to do a master. And I've been here since. Um, but today is my first day of a new job. Um, I'm going to be, uh, well, not going to be. Um, I've started as a data manager, a research data manager at um, Itzhak University at the library. So really to help um, researchers with um, yeah, their data management, so to speak, which is really becoming a big thing with all the interesting data coming in. Uh, yeah, my background is in psychology, clinical psychology. Um, but for now, with my job, I will be working with a lot of different types of research, which is um, exciting. Yeah, and um, with R, I've never really had the opportunity to really work with R, um, but I'm very enthusiastic about it when I see it on Twitter and all the possibilities. Um, I've played around with it to like, you know, make a blog down website and try things like that, but I've not actually done analysis and data cleaning, which is like what you should be doing. So uh, yeah, this is a really nice way to work on that uh, goal. And I hope to learn a lot from all of you. And nice to meet you all. Hi, Neha. By the way, thank you for uh, congratulations for your job. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Really nice. Yeah. It's been a busy day. It's just like new job and then like book club, like so many new things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this is going to be a little bit laid back, so don't, don't worry about it. Yes. So I think we have more people. We have um, Ruth. Yeah, hello, I'm shy. <laughs> hey, Ruth. Um, I'm no from worries. Newcastle. <laughs> I'm from Newcastle in the UK. Um, I work as an analyst. We don't use R, so I'm just trying to learn it in my spare time, I guess, hopefully to use it in the future. Nice. Good. Uh, do you have anyone else? I think, um, so, no, it's, um, hold on a second. I think someone joining twice, right? So we're only five people, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so Sham Sham, you you you're joining with your computer also. Yeah, and okay. uh, my mobile. Okay. Right. Yeah. Great. 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 All right. Yeah. So uh, so sorry about the date. Uh, it's supposed to be updating to the third. 
so we don't back in time. Um, just move on a little bit. Just let me know if, if, if I'm moving fast or if, if I'm moving very, um, if, if I say something that you don't understand or something like that, so that we just have a discussion, really. So please feel free to, to speak anytime. So yes, uh, so like I said, this is about the book club and the R for Data Science book club. And uh, this is the book by Hadley. I think maybe some of you know Hadley, others don't know him, but he's, he's, he's a big guy in R. He has really evolved. Me as someone who, has, who started using R like six years ago, um, like I, I've seen how much R has evolved and it's mainly because of him. So he's, he's, he's really a popular guy. Uh, and uh, one thing I need to mention here is um, we have three facilitators for this book club and myself, then um, I can't really pronounce the, the, the name, so I, but, but I think it's um, she, I keep on forgetting the name, sorry. But I would think it's Muhammad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so Muhammad, Niha. So we are three facilitators and we'll be switching around but, and helping each other. But we hope to do this every Monday at around the same time for, for consistency. Uh, I just put a, a, a poll in, 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 um, in this meeting so that everyone can vote whether this is still okay to keep Monday, just for the democratic reasons. But um, I guess uh, it, should, it should be fine. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, so before I move on, we have Novika. Hi, Novika. Oh, okay. I guess uh, you can hear me, so I'll, I'll just move on. All right. So what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do here is more like a, give a brief introduction or, or an outline. Uh, and the first thing we're going to start with is uh, the introduction to the book, which is like chapter one and a little bit of chapter two, which has really nothing. So and I hope this takes uh, at least, uh, at most 20 minutes. Then we we'll have a session for, for, for the questions or a discussion around everything. Uh, whatever you want to say, we'll take it during that time. And we'll finalize by um, talking about the future meetings. And, uh, and this, this will involve um, the meeting times, and which I think won't change, uh, but most importantly, future chapter presenters among ourselves. All right, so the introduction to the book. So the first thing is, well, it's more of like a summary of, of what we plan to learn. And just, just to mention that I've noticed that from the, from the introduction, some of us don't know R that much. So I'm, I'm not forgetting that, I'm keeping that at the back of my mind. So we'll have some session whereby we talk about how to install R and things like that, and we'll discuss it further uh, uh, as, as, as we move on. But anyway, so what we're going to learn here is, is more of like um, a combination of things, as you can see in this diagram. So we're going to talk about, uh, the book has uh, how to import data in R, because if you don't have data, then you can't do anything with it. So, and so it, you, you consider different data files, data, data types. Um, this, this could be uh, text file, for example, CSV files on, on, on your computer. They could be databases whereby you're connecting to some sort of uh, database from, 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 from your company or an API. Uh, and when you have the data, then you, you, you think about um, tidying the data. And this, this, this is more of like organizing it in, in, in a form that is going to be easy for you to do different things. For example, if you want to do uh, like, 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 like um, a scatter plot and a histogram at the same time, you just need to pick from the same data. Okay, so when, when we have a course, when, when you've done that, the next, the next, next thing is more of like the most interesting thing, also very, very lengthy, which is the transformation of the data, creating new variables, for example, or filtering uh, and reducing the number of variables that you want to use. Then from that, you can do visualization with, it, with, with, um, with, with your data. So visualization is more of like trying to uh, understand the patterns in your data 
trying to come up with hypotheses or questions to answer in, in your data. Uh, then, of course, on top of that, you can also do some modeling. It could be a, a, a normal regression model, hypothesis testing, and, and things like that. Various kinds of models that we might not really need to, that we might not really go into the details, but well, I guess um, uh, there's always time to talk about how many, how many different models you have. Then the other important thing is, of course, communication, communication, communication. So I, th I think like we know that data science has moved from, from a point of um, whereby we, we have computer science geeks or like uh, where, where, where we cannot really interact so much with people, we just want to sit behind the computer and, and, and you know, do our work and send it to the people. But right now uh, we, we are expected to actually go and present stuff for what we have done. To, 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 to maybe the, the, the heads of departments or customers and things like that. And just to summarize everything, this is sort of going to be linked to some kind of a program, which is like uh, combine everything in a function. Uh, what, I, what, I, what I learned from this when I was looking at the book is more of like trying to do reproducible work, trying to do reproducible research in, or, or, for, those of, for those of us who are in research. So that's what you see the, this whole box around everything that we're going to that the book is going to, to talk about. All right. So yeah, now just to go deeper into how the book is organized, the, I think the book is organized in three different parts. The first one is more of like uh, it's about visualization and transforming the data. Uh, then the second one is about uh, how to do how to, to do modeling with your data. Then the third one is the, the programming, how to create uh, functions, how to put your, 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 your script in, in, in two different functions or in two different programs uh, that, that you can reuse over and over again. And here there's different uh, tips about how to think about the programming pro uh, pro uh, problem, how to actually, um, how to do, uh, it's, it's called, um, best uh, ways of writing code, for example. They have, they have some tips about that. This is not a book, of course, to, to talk about the standards of writing code and stuff. There's another book for that, but they keep, keep, keep on giving highlights about the best practices for doing so. Yes, so what, what, one, one thing to note here is that the book actually uses some examples, uses some exercises, which might be good to go into uh, at least one or two at the end of the, the, the chapter to, to discuss. And uh, maybe in, in our book club, we might be going into these one, once in a while, at least a few of them. Okay, so of course, a rather known so sad story uh, is what we won't learn. Uh, this book is focusing more on like, um, I, I, don't want, I don't want to call it small data, but maybe you can just say small data sets. And that is like, uh, and the ones which I already tied it up anyway. So look at, for example, one to two gigabytes, uh, as, as the book points out. But we're not going to look at uh, big data. So big data is uh, different um, uh, software, different programs that, that you have to, to, to use. For example, above, uh, from 10 to 100 gigabytes, for example, and above, you need a different kind of, um, different kind of tool for that. Then we're not going to talk about Julia, Python, and, and friends. However, they, they, they're not saying that, they, that Python and Julia are bad. It's just that trans, just trying to focus on this. And on, if, if you're new to programming, you might as well start with one language and move on to another if you've mastered uh, some of the structures and the syntax and things like that. Then, of course, we don't, we're not going to look at uh, non-rectangular data, which is uh, Examples of these are like images, sounds, um, uh, tree structures, for example, and text. Uh, then we also want to look at uh, hypothesis confirmation. And not, not to go into the details of hypothesis confirmation, but just to mention that uh, hypothesis testing is different from hypothesis, is it? No, hypothesis discovery is different from hypothesis confirmation. So hypothesis discovery is more of like uh, related to the, to the visualization, trying to find out what kind of questions you can ask from your data set. So, uh, and me coming from a statistical background, uh, it's sort of like 
okay, yeah, that's sort of obvious, but it's just for us, it's just good for, for, for everyone to, to, to have this at the back of my mind, at, at the back of our minds, that what we're doing is more of like, what we're going to focus on is more of like hypothesis discovery in the data. Okay, so now to the prerequisites. So I, 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 I was talking to Niha and, 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 and telling her that, um, I think, was it, I think, was it Niha? Yeah. Uh, in, in initially, I, I, I was saying that um, we, I know that I noticed that some people don't know R or they haven't used R, but they're interested, and that's a really great thing. So I can't forget the fact that um, there's people, but some of us who have some programming experience, maybe from other languages or some, some little experience in R. But however, whatever experience, you can still learn this and won't forget that. So, but if you haven't learned any, if you don't have any programming experience, uh, you could, you might sub supplement your knowledge by, by going, trying out uh, maybe this book, Hands-On Programming with R by Garrett, who is also a co-author for, 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 for this book. Uh, and uh, for me, what I want to recommend is that at least try to read the introduction bits. You know, look at the syntax, get used to the syntax, then you can always come back here to the book club and you, you are familiar with some of the things. But of course, if you don't know anything, you can still always ask everyone. Uh, so the first thing, of course, to, 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 to do here when you want to use R is try to install it. And the installation runs in two things, which I always found weird, but well, that's how it works. So the first thing you need to install is R. It was more of like about base R, basically. So it's like the, the one which was created first before they created the interface, the IDE, which is R Studio. So first thing, go to something called Chrome. You can just Google this, uh, download R, non R Studio. You can say download R, and Google will give you, uh, it will take you to the CRAN website whereby you just click and install uh, the best R. Then after you install the best R, you go on and install uh, R Studio. So it's still a, a simple Google will still definitely do the job and will set up everything ni nicely for you. And so just to mention here, uh, we're going to mainly be looking at the tidyverse uh, R packages. That's what that's going to be our focus. And the tidy R packages involve uh, a, a, a very good um, ecosystem of, of different pa uh, packages, uh, and we, we, we should, which 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 we shall see later on. So, for example, they have uh, dplyr, uh, tidy R, they have string R, and uh, and so on and so forth. You don't have to remember these, but they they will come on naturally uh, for you for some of us who haven't been using it. Uh, then, of course, there's other packages, for example, data packages that you're going to come up with or that you're going to come across all the time. And these are examples. For example, the, uh, New York flights. And then there is the, the Gapminder data set, which is about, I think, uh, different countries in, in the world. Then there is uh, the Laman, uh, pack, the Laman package, which I think is about uh, baseball or something like that. Yes. So, yes, we're going to be seeing a lot of things and it's a learning process. Uh, just a quick just a quick note here about how Hi, Alan. yes i have a question for you so maybe i got because um i was using python and uh, when i started looking at r yeah i was a bit confused sometimes they said this is base r this is tidy bytes tidy bars and i was told like tidy bars is a little bit better than base r how can i not learn base r how can i learn only tidy bars because when you put something in google it give you something and when you try it and you ask for help Someone would say, oh, why didn't you try TidyBuzz version and use base R? How can I not learn base R and learn only TidyBuzz? So, so that's, a, that, 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 that's, that's a tough question because, so for me, my story is I learned base R. There was no TidyBuzz. Ah, so, okay. So I was very reluctant to, to learn TidyBuzz because I was like, I don't want to learn something new and I can do almost everything here with Tidy. We, 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 we base R. However, tidyverse is faster and simpler. So what I recommend is that at least you need to know the syntax of R. Don't, don't, don't try to, to learn to, to be an expert at base R. Just learn the syntax, the, the, the vectors, the matrices. Of course, just like when you're learning a new language, or the, 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 the data structures in, in R, then you move to, tide, to the tidyverse. Because it's gonna be faster, you won't be bored with uh, you know, digging deeper into solving something like for a whole week writing code, which is even yeah. slower. 
anyway. Yeah, it may be confusing actually for me at the start. How I wish they would scrap the base R and leave the third universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because in Python, you don't have Python version. Python, I mean, you need to write different code in different yeah. stuff like that. You know, I mean, it's really, really confusing for we that start using R. Like, you need to know which is it base R or tidy buzz stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I understand. But uh, you, you shouldn't, honestly, you shouldn't worry about uh, the base R that much. Like, like this, you shouldn't worry about it. Okay. Just, just, just think about it as. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. Go, go on. Okay, yeah, go on. I wanted to say something about the question he's asking. Yeah, yeah, please, please go. On. Yeah, so, so you can't, you know, uh, base R is always going to be there. So it's like it's like your mobile phone and you download an app on your mobile phone. So that app is like tidy worse. <laughs> yeah. Your phone is always there, you know. But whenever you need an app, you just open that app. So whenever you need to do work in tidy worse, you just install it like using the library function and then library tidy worse. Yeah. Yeah. And you can just use all the commands. But mm -hmm. you know, base R is always gonna come up at some point. So it's always, you know, like Alan mentioned that learn about the vectors and you know the matrices and those kind of stuff. Which if you're using uh Python, then you you might be aware of matrices is kind of the same thing in R. Yeah. So tidyverse is is easy because it's clean and you are writing less code. Uh, but when you um, you know install it, you bring it the tidyverse package into your R you know environment. Then you are in tidyverse, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, am I in a base or in uh, am I in tidyverse? Uh, you know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Yeah. So uh, just 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 a quick um, look at how the book is going to be. I hope I. I showed it very well, but uh, basically they just run the code, but they indicate the code, which is not yet run by um, this arrow, uh, it's more of like a greater than sign. Uh, then uh, when you run the code, they show the result with um, an asterisk, I mean, I mean a, a, an ash symbol, sorry. So this will be like the code, but with um, a greater than sign. So the greater than, greater than sign in R is called a prompt. And maybe we shall, I can show this, uh, let me see, let me see, let me, let me, let me just try to show this. Uh, can you see, can you still see my screen? Okay, so just open up the script. Anyway, so basically this is like the R Studio interface and uh, what I'm talking about of running something is down here, if you could see, for example, one plus two. So what they show in, in the book, they show this whole line here with the greater than sign, right? And when you run that, they show you this, but they add, and hash, they add, they add a hash symbol before it. So they write it like something like this. Okay, so just uh, some, something to note. But now the other thing, which I think is, for me, it's most important is how to get help when you're learning. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's an island, you shouldn't be an island, you should, you should seek out for help. The first thing is try to Google, first advice, try to Google. And you could Google anything, how to do this and this in R and everything is gonna come. So, so much suggestion. Then you can also Google the error messages. And for me, I keep on using these all the time. Uh, one other thing is Stack Overflow. And so Stack Overflow is this site whereby it's uh, people post questions, mainly take questions, but I think there's also some other kind of questions. And uh, you can get help from, from the community. It's every programmer, every, some, every person who's working with programming, actually should know or should know Stack Overflow. Uh, then another thing which I can't miss out is the R for Data Science Online Mining. 
which is what, 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 how we came together right now. And uh, I, I, I found this really, really, really helpful. Regardless of your level, if you want to just learn, just go out there and ask a question in, in the Slack channel. Uh, I would also mention uh, the, the R, the tight, the, what's it called? Tidy Tuesday, which is, which is like uh, some, something that, that, that we do on, on, on Twitter. So you just get a data set every week and try to do something with it. Normally it's a visualization with a data set. People do a lot of cool stuff. I have learned a lot of stuff from people's code. So I advise at least to start by following uh, the Tidy Tuesday on, on Twitter. Then of course there's the R Studio blog where you get everything about updates, new 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 new, new uh, changes in the IDE, for example, uh, and and a lot of things. You you can even get webinars uh, explaining different things from the R Studio blog. Um, I'm also a part of that. I jo I joined like way back. It's really good. Uh, then the other thing is uh, one thing which has actually improved my R was um, I'm not saying I'm I'm putting anything, or oh, I've learned a, a lot of stuff from Twitter. So just pick one person whom you think like is, you know, is doing something nice and follow them. Then you follow more people, then you learn some stuff. Some people have like runs about R, like the whole day. So you, you pick up one thing or two. So of course you can start by following Hadley. You see the people he follows, the people he likes. Uh, Garrett also, I, I honestly don't follow Garrett yet. I think I, I should do that. But yeah, you can also follow follow him. Then you can also follow uh, our studio tips, uh, and uh, they give you tips. I think like every day or something like that. I'm not I'm not so sure. But then there is the, the hashtag R stats. So the good thing about this hashtag, like anything related to R, you can just hashtag it. If you have a question about R, you can hashtag it and people just respond. It's really helpful. And then of course the R bloggers. So it's, this is more of a collection of all blogs. Uh, for, for, for about R, and it's 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 also a pretty, pretty pretty good. Most times when you Google something, they could take you to this uh, blog. Actually, all right. So uh, I don't know. If I should take this now, but it's more of like just a reminder that next week is going to be about chapter three. Uh, I'll try to summarize chapter one and two right now so next week is chapter three then we're going, we'll have to decide of course who's going to present or, or what how we should do it so that's it for me i don't know how how long i took but hopefully not that long so done Thank thanks you. alan yeah so now questions guys and discussion i'm done talking Um, I had a couple of questions, um, but also just along with Alan and uh, Shamsuddin about how we're going to do this. So um, it kind of made sense that the first, we just went through the first chapters because like, well, you know, it's the first chapters that set the stage. Yeah. But just to once again hear from everybody, um, has everyone been able to install R and kind of run some code? And was everything that was covered in chapters one and two already familiar to you or not? And I think what we're interested in is like if it's not the case, because then we can help you out or offer some tips. Or was everyone fine with it? If everyone's fine, then they can just give us a thumbs up or put it in the chat. Yeah, because I think most people here are fairly good um, with chapter one and two. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, another thing that I also wanted to put in, and then we can kind of just with, was about hooking up um, GitHub with R. Has everyone kind of done that? Or is it something that you haven't done? Because I would be willing to um, give a quick, um, tutorial on how that is done before we do the database or after the database. Mm. That's, that's also good. So guys. Yeah, I have done that. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. Um, Shamsuddin, Root. What do you say, please, can you come again? Um, how to um, link GitHub with RStudio. 
Ah, okay, I've done that. Okay, cool. So everyone's done it, so that's great. <laughs> okay, um, Ruth, and I think Novisa, she's you know, at advanced R, so I think you're going to be fine. Uh-huh. Uh, what about Ruth, if you want to drop a message? on uh, yeah exactly so you have like a git tab if you can show us our studio me yeah okay yeah yeah oh yeah well i mean yeah it looks like everyone has it so okay then we can just continue yeah actually i don't know <laughs> i never use this but yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay so they're very very good points niha so, uh, yeah, so what, what, what do you guys want to do? Do you have any questions, any more questions for now? Yeah, so also uh, uh, in the book club organizers session, they advise uh, want to be familiar with the book, Happy Git with R. So if you have anything or you want to learn with Git in combination in R, the book is really good happy git with r so it is recommended so if anyone has looking for any help he can check that book yeah yeah i don't know what i'm looking at happy git <laughs> he looked happy git with r <laughs> yeah that was awkward mm. yes so yeah yeah, very, very funny book. Very nice book, actually. I used it a while ago. Yeah. I recommend it. Yeah. Also, yeah. I do recommend I do recommend screencast for David Robinson for Tidy Tuesday. So every Tuesday, he has a screencast live coding art. So someone can pick up a good way of coding and stuff like that. And it's interesting to see that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All righty. Right. So, uh, I think we have no B, no, uh, no B, that, right? So, oh, she cannot talk. Maybe we yeah. can ask, have this started the session? Does she have any advice for her own session? Because I don't know, oh, they have not started or anything else. Sorry, can you, can you say that again? Okay, I think, um, yeah. So we need the one who will better, uh, present the next chapter, chapter three, right? No, 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 the first, first repeat for Novika. Okay. Hello? Yeah, he, he, can, he can hear you. Yeah, I said, um, who is gonna present the next chapter? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, but but before we go to that, uh, Novika was was he was listening to you, so he wanted you to repeat what you were saying before. Hey, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, I can't listen. You said what? Uh, he he wanted to know uh, what you were saying about uh, his other club, his other book club. Ah, okay, okay. I was saying, uh, uh, have they started their own book club? Do they have any, I mean, advice so that we can, uh, I mean, adapt in our own book club? No, actually, uh, tomorrow is the, the first ah, okay. day for the advance. So I'm actually here to okay. see how you guys are doing it. So I can, <laughs> I can take that experience tomorrow. So, but yeah, you can join for the advanced start tomorrow as well if you want. It's going to be at the same time, more or less. All right. Um, Good luck with it. Yeah, nice. Thanks, thanks. Advanced R. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, um, so maybe just a couple of things to, um, yeah, exactly. So let's figure out some logistics. So what, exactly what Alan has on his slides: uh, future meetings, uh, meeting times, and who are going to be chapter presenters. Um, I don't know how many of us. Um, one thing to be just made clear um, there is no commitment to the point where you have to show up 
unless you're presenting, then we would kind of hope that you would show up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you don't have to commit that you have to show up um, every time. You, if you can make it, you can make it. If not, um, you know, life gets in the way and that's fine. But yeah, if you're gonna present, that's a different thing. Um, so yes, it's pretty flexible in terms of joining in. Um, I think meeting times, um, is there is everyone who wants to stick with this, okay, with the meeting time, which is 7.30 European time. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm good with it as well. Um, Root? Um, he's not there, I think. You can just uh, okay, drop so, a message in the chat. That's fine. Oh, huh? Oh, so, nice. Uh, cool. You know, the next um, presentation. So we're going to do actual code here showing or just like some slides from the book. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, today, like you guys talked about chapter one, but it was just like a general overview. Yeah. So. I, as, is it going to be the same or we can like actually show people like, okay, uh, what's the code or example in the book? And then yeah. we can show, share with screen and yeah, yeah. using yeah. the data set in the book. Is that what we're going to do next time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, ideally that, that should, that should be very okay. And, uh, like uh, I've been following the, the advanced R book club, which is about to end. Um, they've, been, they've been doing that and they've been so happy with it. People have been learning a lot of stuff. However, if you're a presenter and you don't feel comfortable with doing it, it's still fine, really. But maybe someone else can, can share the screen and do that, help you out. Yeah, yeah I think, well, I think um, basically, if everyone's fine with it, um, what we can agree on is that it, it will, we'll try to make it a hands-on book club. So. Yeah, uh, the first two chapters are really just informative. Um, it's just descriptive, but for the next chapters, uh, yeah, we try to have our studio open, hopefully, or someone can screen share, and then we kind of figure it out um, all together. Or we can also decide if you want to try something before, and then see um, how it was um, in the meeting or something. Yeah, so, but basically, so, be hands on. Mm -hmm. I think um, the uh, advanced book club, advanced art book club, the first cohort, what they were doing it was like, um, they maybe dedicated like 20, 15 minutes for just um, slide presentation, talking about the chapter, what the content of the chapter is. And after then you go and run, uh, have a hands-on demonstration of what the content of the chapter is. So, yeah. I'm not sure whether we're going to have some kind of a combination of the two where the first few minutes, like 20 minutes, just present the theoretical aspect and the, the notion behind the chapters, uh, brush them up and uh, the lion's share of the minutes at the end, then we can do a kind of hands-on. So I'm not sure whether which one will be uh, fine. But also uh, one of the suggestions uh, made by uh, uh someone in the advanced art book club was saying like uh, uh people uh if you ask them to come and do live coding sometimes it will be like a, a kind of off putting they may not feel comfortable like doing live coding and that uh, they are comfortable to present so in such case if we have someone that can present only the chapters in slide and someone can they can um collaborate with someone to do the live coding after then that's fine so I think it will be a kind of um, uh, depends on someone who is going to present. I'm not sure which one is good. No, no, I mean for for the, for the future or, or, or the other ones. So trying to decide for the next or the other meetings anyway. Okay, um, can we just um, repeat very quickly what are the options? Like one option is uh, a person quickly going through the slides of um, the chapter. Um, very quickly just giving an overview of the chapter and then we get down to doing the code and then figuring it out and what was the other option ah okay so i say the uh, the first option was like um, pre present the chapter in slides talking about the theoretical aspect and i mean going down through the chapter as whole and after 
I mean, in the previous advanced art book club, they took a data set and applied the concept on that chapter on yeah. that particular data set during the live screen coding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. But there is already like a data set in the um, recommended. Yeah, in yeah the for our own, we exercises, have already have right? So, we can just follow through the exercises in the book. So, I yeah. see like. Um, uh, the first steps of data is this, like the MPG data frame. So we can just, you know, go with that. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's it's already in in the uh, R studio the data set. So we don't need to yeah. download the data set, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think that is what might be for me. I think that's uh, what might be nice. Um, someone can quickly do an overview very quickly with slides. Do an overview. And um, and then we can try and do um, the exercises. Yeah, uh, we can try and do the exercises um, in the time that we have, and maybe we can like work in pairs um, or something, so we can like advise each other and then come back um, to yeah. Or, yeah, or it's good. Yeah. Few people, we can just work as a group as well. So that's yeah, fine. yeah. So it's good to walk through the exercise as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we make sure that at the end of each week, I mean, even if not live through Slack, we can solve all the questions in the particular chapter mm -hmm. because it does make sense just to go through the chapter without hands on doing the stuff. No. It will really stick into the memory while practicing them, not only going through reading and stuff like that. So yeah. I really recommend that um, even if time doesn't permit for us to walk through all the exercise, we can actually uh, do some question and parts through Slack, just uh, yeah, trying to put the solution and do correction and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to ask is um, to also kind of think about it, like to what extent do you have, do you all have time or are willing to put in time to do something um, before our book club session? So for example, oh, try to do the exercise, like, do, like read the chapter yourself a little bit and try to do the exercise before and then come back and then we troubleshoot mm -hmm. and then yep. we like, okay, go through that together. Yep. Or would you like to keep it like lower commitment and then we just show up at the book club and then we try and do that uh, then and there. And then maybe if we run out of time, then it's like, uh, well, Monday is our session, and then you have like the whole week to try and finish the exercise on your own time if we don't finish it ourselves. And then we can like compare um, anything or discuss it on Slack if there are any issues or questions. And uh, then next Monday we meet again. Hmm. It, it, I yeah. prefer the latter. I, I don't want to do too much outside of uh, the book club also because then my head will explode. I have too much going on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we 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 shouldn't be. Um, it's it's good to be ambitious, not so over ambitious, so that we feel overwhelmed. Um, because some, sometimes, like for me personally, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't determine my schedule. If my supervisor comes to me and he wants something, then <laughs> I, I have to organize. But uh, we could. I think it's fine for us to just try and solve as many as possible without putting um, a strict um, rule like all of them. You know. Yeah. Okay. If you have question, if we have, if you tried some exercise number and uh, you have, you want to discuss it further, we can still use Slack, I believe. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to call dibs on chapter five, data transformation. It's mine now. Okay, I took data it. Data transformation. So Niha, <laughs> chapter five. All right. Yes. I don't understand GT plot. There's just too many little things. So someone else, please do it. <laughs> no, I can I can do that if someone if if no one wants to take it. But um, uh, I'll I'll give a chance to to someone to first think about it. It would be nice to see. So um yes yeah, so, but um are we are, do we think uh one That's hour? Three, or, yeah. Sorry. Uh. Data transformation is that chapter three, yeah? Yeah, data transformation is chapter, no, uh, data transformation is chapter five, uh, data visualization is chapter three. Okay, well, the book I have, 
it's uh, maybe I don't know if it's the recent version I, I got is changed so indeed uh, because I got this uh, in like a hard copy and ah, it's, uh, okay. chapter three is data transformation with deep layer so I was looking at that oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, I have it online and take the free version online. Yeah. Okay. That's fine, but we know the title of the chapter, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, maybe of course you can also always always check. Ah, okay. Yeah, I see. It's the online the, version. It's okay. <coughs> data, yep. data visualization is, um, I think it's chapter four uh, here. But, really. Yeah. And now it's chapter one here actually in this book. It's the first chapter, data visualization. Okay, okay. Uh, with GG plot. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. We know if we know the, the title, so. Mm. Yeah, but, but so maybe we could just take around if, if someone knows uh, if, if they want to present chapter three or chapter four. Chapter three is, uh, okay, there's data visualization. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Three. Chapter four, anybody? Four is it's also is. okay if you don't fully understand um, the chapter yourself. Uh, you're kind of, it's like your, um, like how you teach your friends in school or university. Okay, cool. Uh, we have chapter four. Three, four, and five planned, and then we can think about the next chapters when we get to it. Oh, who has taken chapter four? Hmm? Uh, Shamsuddin, he uh, wrote it in the chat. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so we have three chapters now, and we will see how it goes. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll definitely take one of the next ones. Okay. Right, so, um, and, okay, so we'll write this somewhere, like on GitHub? Create a pull request. Oh. Yeah, pull request. Oh. Um, also, just a question Do we want to have a separate Slack something for us to talk, or is that also is the usual Slack fine? Hmm. I think I'd like yeah. a separate one where it's just us. Okay, um, I'll, I'll look into that. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's like it's the whole thing is paid for, right? Like we don't have to. It didn't, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll try to make like a. I won't make like a new channel, but I'll make like a direct message group between all of us. Okay. okay. So yeah, like a fine. new channel is just like there are so many actually well organized channels you want to. Make. Yeah, you have to talk to John for that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a um, Slack messaging. Uh, thread between all of us. Uh, we have our chapter presenters. The time is fine. We're going to do it in a way that is someone does a quick overview of About the slides and then we go through the exercises as far as we can and then if you don't finish do it in the week and then use the thread to ask questions or need for help. I was just summarizing everything. Yeah, nice. Great. Uh, yeah, so one, 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 one thing about, about the time, uh, I, I don't know how much time will be enough, but at least we could target just maybe one hour or one and a half hours. I have no idea what you guys think. Yeah, one hour is fine. One hour should be fine. Yeah, just in and out. Yeah, and yeah, like I, for me, I'm just like, if I don't finish the exercise, I'll just carry on with it the rest of the week and then get yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, nice. That sounds good. Uh, right. So is I there anything else? Um, does anyone else have something to add in the chat about something that they would like to have or we have a GitHub repo, so we can use that. Um, but is there is there something else that you want? Like I don't know, a Google Doc or slides or. Mm -hmm. We go uh, the uh, GitHub, GitHub repo, yeah. Alan, because I haven't checked it out yet. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I, I 
the it's, it's not that nice actually i need to recommend changes because they sort of joined both of our groups into one so it's hard to navigate um where is john yeah so, <laughs> i have so many things on my computer right now ah. okay sorry yes so this is the github repository i'll close that and this can you see Yeah, so this is what it looks like and the information is down here for example meeting schedules uh we have group one and group two so we're of course in group two and uh this is what i don't understand where we put the the the, the presenters like this is, we have two groups so we need to be able to specify which group it is Yeah, I think it's it's a. Um, I think he just basically made like a template. So when we have the presenter and the slides, we edit that and put it there. Yeah, I probably. The slides are already there. Slides are already made. Or? No, no, no. You you make a slide. So this is just a template. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. So just a placeholder. Yeah, sure. So I, I, mean, was... <laughs> I think he just kind of made the index so people can just edit it. Um, so if you look at the chat, uh, Shamsuddin and Mobiza had, um, yeah. Chapter four and five be done by one person. Okay, let me take a look, quick look. Yeah, chapter four is very simple. I can do that as well. Oh, wait. Six and seven workflow scripts. Uh, yeah, I can do uh, four and five. So you mean do four, five, four and five uh, in one meeting? Yeah. So the workflow basics is just like a very quick one page, one pager. So I can just include that in okay. the regular data transformation chapter. Okay. And then Shamsuddin says he can do six and seven. No, I have to go back here. And that's again like one workflow chapter and then um, EDA. EDA is okay. Yeah. yeah. EDA is quite okay, quite a lot. No problem. So we're doing um, EDA. We can also like just like the week before um, as we like at the end of a meeting, we can take a quick look at the next chapter and we can decide like, oh, is this chapter very long and do we need to split it across two meetings? That can also be uh, the case. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, maybe no need to uh, like decide that now because like there's too much forward planning, but like at the end of the meeting, uh, one meeting we just go over like oh scroll real fast just like oh this one looks actually very long uh, maybe we split it um, this one looks fine we'll stick to the original plan yeah okay that's that's a good point um, some chapters are really small mm -hmm. <laughs> that's short all right nice so, by Niha, have you taken note of the the, the possible presenters? Uh, I yes, I can do that very quickly. I'll put it in the chat. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, chapter three is where's my where's my screen? Chapter three. Okay, so we have up to chapter seven. Um, I think we can just stop there for now and just see how it goes. And then after that, we can come back and be like, okay, um, what do we do about section two? Unless someone also wants to cover workflow projects. 
Yes, yes, that's quite just like one page. Also very short. Uh, we can maybe link that to um, chapter nine because that's also an introduction. So we'll quickly cover that as part of chapter nine. So eight and nine, someone can do together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, which is why I should just do it with. Um, oh yeah, let then do eight, nine, and ten together then. Yeah, well, we 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 can we can stop here for now. Yeah, yeah, we can uh, look at that more carefully later. For now, we just stick with this. Okay. So I'll add everyone who is online here now to um, the Slack group thread, if that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Nobika, can we add you to our group? I think you, I think Novita said uh, he wants to try and attend as many meetings. Yeah. Okay. okay. I saw it in the chat. I'll keep an eye on the chat. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions, concerns, suggestions, ideas they want to share? No? Okay. Uh, Alan, is everything like clear? Um, do we want to wrap up then? Yes, uh, yes. It's uh, 8.30 now. Yes, so it's just a perfect time for us to wrap up. Oh, just one. Oh, nice. This is perfect. One hour, exactly. All right, guys. Uh, th thank, you, thank you very much for, for, for showing up. I uh, hope to see you again as many times as possible. Uh, I, I maybe if you can't make it, you you can just write to us and say, "Oh, yeah. I can't make it" or something like that. Uh, but but no no pressure, no commitment. All right, I'll end the meeting now and hope to see you next week at the same time. So next week is data visualization, yeah. Yes. Okay. Data Which I'm doing. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. Bye.